managing smile complications. Uh, of course, I've, I've been a consultant for Carl Zeiss for some time. Look, I'm, I'm, one of, I'm, I'm a great believer in standardization of technique. In cataract surgery, I see the Monday morning session is very, very interesting because everyone does everything differently. But smile is a very simple problem to solve. You have to take a lenticule out. And if everyone is offering different techniques and someone is doing better than everyone else, it's very hard to identify what element that is to benefit everyone. Whereas if everyone is operating with the same technique and someone happens to be getting better outcomes, it's very easy to identify what the difference is and apply that to everyone so that we can all benefit. Now, five minutes for complications, well, let's be clear. Uh, our, our textbook, um, which is based on our learning curve of 4,000 eyes, has 154 pages on just complications. So we're obviously going to have to pick a few of the, better, you know, the, the, the greatest hits uh, to talk about in a few minutes. And I've picked these four because I think they're the main pitfalls of people starting smile. The first one is to do with energy settings. Uh, David Kang published this beautiful study, uh, video study, where he looked at bubble pattern according to the amount of energy. Uh, and you, we all know that the amount of energy injected into the cornea is a factor uh, determined by either the amount of individual energy per spot, but also the spot separation. So the higher the energy, the more likely you're going to get OBL and therefore irregular cutting. The lower the energy, the more regular the cutting, but it might be harder to separate the interface. We do know that lower energies give better visual recovery, but you can't be too close to the plasma level because there's a small variation during cutting and between individuals. So you don't want to end up with sub-threshold cutting in certain areas where you end up bluntly dissecting and causing irregularities. So you need to be a little bit backed off the threshold level. That's essentially where the energy needs to be. In terms of spacing, of course, the closer the spacing, the easier it is to separate the lenticule, but the more OBL you'll get, and again, the more irregular the cut can be. So you need to back off on the closeness of the spacing so the ease of separation improves, but not too wide because then the ease of separation decreases. And of course, the smaller the spa spacing, the longer the suction time, the greater chance there is of an eye movement or a suction loss. So energy settings is one of the biggest pitfalls of people smart starting smile, and you need to be very, very careful about paying attention to your application specialists, the way they set your laser, and learning about how to be vigilant vigilant during treatment. You have to be like an eagle watching the bubble patterns because here's a case where the, stroma didn't, the stromal tissue interaction was not standard and it led to a problem. Here's a meibomium gland in the interface. Here's another one. And here's a small eye movement, you see, causing a crescenteric defect. So a boarding smile and switching to LASIK is a great idea. LASIK is a great procedure. Now, instrumentation is the second area. And there are lots of instruments now out there, and I have personally tried most of these and developed uh, a sense for the three key features that a smile instrument has to have. The first is that the shaft has to be thick. And the reason for that, in Georg Eisner's textbook, is very clearly delineated. The thicker the shaft when you're dissecting a lamellar interface, trying to break bridges, the more orthogonal force you're going to be applied, and therefore the more effective your dissection force is going to be in the 90-degree in the, in the axis. The roundness of the bulb must be not sharp. That tip, if it's sharp, and it is in many instruments, will cause false planes, and that's a pretty dangerous thing to do in, in, in smile. And the Sinsky-type tip has to be longer and rounder to not get false planes at the beginning of the treatment. At the beginning of the treatment, sometimes people don't identify the lenticule edges and end up underneath that used to be called a complication. But my colleague Glenn Karp showed that if you just insert the Sinsky tip tangential to the um, edge and rotate it anteriorly, you will catch the lenticule 100% of the time and you will remove the lenticule routinely. Retained particles, well, you know, you should always check your lenticles at the end because you can have little bits that might have been torn away because the lenticles are thin or because of OBL in the periphery. And there are five techniques for doing this, for detecting these little edges. You can either feel around the border, you can use the slit lamp that's attached, you can lift and use an air pocket that gives you better visualization of edges. 
You can use the reserve incision. We use two two millimeter incisions outside of the U.S. Of course, you can you have a big incision here, so you can get access to most of the areas. But there are nine reasons why we use two incisions. And you can use Kenalog in the interface, and that'll delineate interfaces for you. The point is that retained lenticules don't cause a problem if you identify them and remove them. And even if you leave small ones, it doesn't cause a problem. So really, it's about management of complication. As just to finish, I'll mention that function loss, which is thought to be the worst thing that could happen. In fact, we don't think of it as a complication. We think of it as a management issue. We've developed an algorithm which we've published and we've published the outcomes showing that the outcome of the suction loss eye versus the fellow eye are identical and the patient leaves the operating room the same day with treatment. There is no change in outcome. So the, the bottom line is that for like for any surgical procedure, if you can develop expertise before starting your procedure, meaning using other people's learning curve, and for in our example, 4,000 eyes which we froze, analyzed videos, produced 16 hours of densely narrated video, 450 pages of, of, of clearly delineated text. If you can read something like that, if you can take a course and become an expert before you start, then you are using superior expertise to avoid complications where you might be able to have to use superior expertise to manage a complication. Thank you.